So it's your boy Ronnie Harrell. I'm here in the My Soul Towers with the king of smooth soul. He's delivered <laughs> the killer albums, Esoteric, The Appetizer, The Vault, Left, a music fan first. I'm joined by Mr. Nice Guy, a.k.a. Ero, a.k.a. Eric Robeson. How are you, sir? Man, I'm great. How about you? Yeah, man, I'm good. It's great to see you. Likewise, always. Yeah, man. It's been a minute as well, hasn't it, I think? It's, it's been some time, man. You know, I usually get out here a lot more, so we're going to make sure. But, you know, I had some, some babies recently, so, it, you know, it slowed down a little bit. But we're uh, we picking it back up. Of course. So how's Father treating you? Oh, great. It's the, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah? yeah, 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 I love it, love it. Making pancakes every morning, you know, added a little, a few pounds because I, I had to taste test the pancakes, make sure it's <laughs> correct for the boys. As you but, uh, but yeah, man, I'm loving it, man. And Mrs. Arrow? Oh, she's doing great. She's doing great. She's a, she's a kid in the candy store as well. Right, right. You know, so it's it's been great, man. You know, it's 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 been right along as planned. Everything's the schedule. They're in the studio with me and everything. Oh, you perfect. know, so so it's a good 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 time. Have you recorded a little one yet? They've been recording a little bit, uh, not enough. They're not. They gotta. They gotta work a little more before we, uh, <laughs> before we uh, publish that stuff. Right. But they, a lot of times they're sitting on my laps while I'm recording. You know, it's just you know, hey, what you gonna do? You either got to do it at some point. So why not mm -hmm. do why why you playing with them and stuff like that? So they they're used to it now. They see the mics, they see the keyboards and the drum. The the little one, I got a one year old. He's already. You can't find him without drumsticks. He's That's just serious. walking around beating on the whole house. The, the whole house has dents in it everywhere. Just little <laughs> dents from him playing drums on it. So you'll have the, the, the Robeson experience in a few years' time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, and Robeson and the boys, you know. <laughs> oh, brilliant, man. Well, congratulations on, on, man, on being a father and, of course, on your new album, B-Sides, ah. Features and Heartaches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Show the My Soul family hey. this. It's the new album out there now. It came out on the 4th? Yeah, yeah here, it right? came out this week, yeah. yeah. Okay, so how does it feel to have a, some brand new music out there? Oh, just real good. You know, it's funny, I'm celebrating my 20th year in the music business. Wow. So this year we want to put out two albums, you know, and just really just do as much as we can to just really celebrate and, and just share as much as we can. So this album was a great, great startup, um, just showing amazing collaborations I had with so many people. I, always, I really want to amplify that I wouldn't be here without the collaborative spirit. I mean, just even from you and I and our relationship and just what, how you've been able to amplify what we're doing to the people here, it's like it's all a shared effort to really bring good energy and good music to the forefront. And, um, and that's what we're doing, man, with this album. Okay, okay. So it's uh, interesting, the, the concept, obviously, I want to talk to you about the other album yeah. that you're going to be putting out. I hope you're going to give us some, uh, some little nuggets of information about it. Indeed, that, indeed. But... Um, First of all, where's the B-sides, dude? The B-sides, I, I don't, what do you, right. what do you see as a B-side on this record? Well, you know, let's, let's see, let's see. Well, you know, because <laughs> I, I don't look at, I don't look at B-side as a bad thing. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? Right, right. Uh, but like Deja Vu, a great song I did with, uh, with Les Nubians. Right, yeah. um, it's more of like, uh, when I looked at B-sides, it was always, when a single came out, I was always a fan of what was on the other side. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it just, that's just how I've always been. I was always just searching for these little nuggets. B-side means... That that nugget that maybe we once you wash it a little bit you'll find out it's it's a piece of gold you okay. know what I mean okay. so um, that was kind of the things that you know certain records that we did that may not have gotten attention that we thought not just the first single kind of things but just the songs like man I thought that song was gonna you know or people just say oh man I love that record where can I find it at mm -hmm. and then we try to grab those B sides and, and showcase those okay so let's break down the album then yes okay as far as um a lot of the collaborations, we mentioned that earlier. What prompted you, first of all, to do the collaborative album before your, your new album that you're going to put out later one, on? One of my staff members in my label, Jarrell Allen, a uh, real good friend, uh, was the one who actually came up with the idea. He said, you know, why don't you do a record um, of collaborations and just he, he was the one who even said why don't you call it B-Sides Features and Hardys? He was the one, he came with the whole, and I said, oh, let me think about this and we, we started thinking about it and, and we were recording, said, okay, well, I'm going to put some, some new, I got some new studio records here I want to put on the record. And then we, st we started looking and we had like 30 to 40 collaborations just over the years. And we really wanted to make sure we picked something that was going to be fresh and new to majority of my fan base. I, I, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who's going to know all these songs. They, they'll probably know one or two, but for the most part, we, you know, and just, our tours and travels. We recorded with people in South Africa and New York and mm -hmm. London, of course, and Rotterdam, Amsterdam. And so we just really wanted to showcase that while, man, while we're touring, man, we're meeting people and fall in love with cultures and, and, and getting in the studio and working with people, you know, and, and try to really showcase that, mm -hmm. um, that, that, that share and camaraderie that we've been having. You know, it's like, it's funny because I was thinking to myself, when I first heard about you putting this project out, I was like, 
man, that's going to take a while to do because you're, you're <laughs> going to go and find all these people. You've got, like, like you say, Les Nubians on there. You've got Angela Johnson, Zoe. Um, but obviously, it's tracks that you've done over the, yeah, a period yeah. of time. And like I said, it was, it was certain things where I think, I think this record, is, there's a lot of artists on here that people won't know about. And hopefully, if they like this song, they'll also look up this per- particular artist. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to say that almost 99% of the people I've worked with, I've been fans of already. Yeah. And, um, and I would support their music whether I was on it or not. Mm-hmm. So um, not only is there new material on here, but there's other material that, that, that kind of just washed over. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, my, my thing is I, don't, I try to fight lost art. You know, art that doesn't get a chance to be recognized, whether because it just didn't have the right format or it just wasn't his time. But um, for me, I chase goosebumps, man. When I listen to music, that's what I want to hear. I want to, I want to feel. Yeah. So if a song felt that way to me, I'm trying to give it to my family because that's how I create music. The yeah. same, the same way. It's like if, if it feels good to me, okay, who who does this feel good to? We we base this album off the same way. I love speaking to you. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh. we're, we're just, I think a lot of the time, me as a DJ, obviously you as an artist, that we're on the same page. Yeah. I love to play music that is, you know, especially records that got away, that I yeah. feel got away. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, might have bought it, didn't do anything, you pull it out and you just think, this record's so good. How come yeah. it wasn't a hit? Or, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's just the way of the world. It's just it's so some, much music. Sometimes there, it happens, you know? Uh, let's talk about some of those records uh, off the album that you were saying you wanted to give a little bit of spark to. I was speaking to you before we actually started this interview about the, uh, this could be the night track. This could be the it's night. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Now, I, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, Foreign Exchange, obviously yeah. yourself, Zoe. I've not heard this track before. You said it's an old track. Yeah, it was off his off of Zoe's first album, uh, maybe three years ago. Okay. Uh, and I remember Fonte uh, called me up and said, hey, man, we're working on a Zoe record. And I got this song one, and I said, hey, send it here, man. You know, and, and me and Fonte have a great relationship. The whole Foreign Exchange family in general, uh, we're on each other's projects all the time. Mm-hmm. So um, so it's pretty good. And, you know, I, I don't know if you know, but me and Fonte are doing an album together in 2015. No way. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We, we've both committed to it. We've both committed to it. We haven't recorded album, the song number one. No. But, <laughs> but it's going to be easy. That, that I look forward to. But yeah. 2015, we're going to get together and do a, do a duo album. Uh, but that was that was one of the records. It was really really easy, man. They, they sent me the idea. I said, um, okay, I got in the studio and, mm-hmm. and, and started writing, you know. And then, uh, and uh, if you, YouTube, there's a great video to it as well. We, you know, we got yeah. we got pretty dapper and got up and tried to, you know, do our little one two moves. Okay, I know you like to look dapper. I've seen I've I'm seen trying. the videos. I'm I've, trying. Man. I've seen the, Come the on, photo shoots. Stop, 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 <laughs> man, Mr. Clean. I know. Look at you. <laughs> The collar under the sweater. You, oh, I know, you know, come on, man. Come on, man. I, I, know, I, know, how to, I know how to get proper today, man. I, know I, was, how to... Mis- I was meeting Mr. Clean Cut as well oh. as Mr. Nice Guy to make sure I represented. You know what I mean? Welcome once again, though, to the My Soul Towers. It's a beautiful thing to talk to you. Right. Um, and, you know, the big R&B show. It's the first time we've spoken yeah. since I've been on this station. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. Well, I'm glad. Glad. Glad to be here. First of many times. Um, I know that's going to be the case. So tell me about the joint anymore. Mm. That's, a, that's one of the, the singles off the yeah, album, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my drummer who's who's on the road with us right now is uh, a, a producer. He's worked with a lot of my records. He did the majority of Music Fan First album. Mm. His name is Brett Baker, and uh, he and I came up with this idea. And uh, and really, you know, it's funny. It's it's can be a sad song, but we try to inject a bit of humor in it, you know. Um, and I think it's something that's kind of maybe showcasing where we might go a lot more later on, you know. Just, I mean, sure, want to have heartfelt, very serious lyrics, but... You know, try to inject some humor, try to inject some some happy feelings into mm. into music as well. You know, um, the bright side of dark sides. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, it's a great record, man. We we just had a lot of fun doing it, and we we did it, and we we're like, this could easily be for the next album, but you know what? Let's put it on this album. You know, and it's just just uh, it fit, it worked out. I like the way you've heard, you filmed the video as well. Like well, <laughs> one of the videos, I, I suppose it's like you know just a. A thing where you've just thought, you know what, let's just do this spur at the moment where you're signing the album. You're actually yeah, yeah. signing the albums and you're yeah, singing yeah, it. So yeah. I love that. But you know, what we, so. we did uh, back in the States, we, we had like a little pre order thing where I would sign CDs and the orders came. So it was like my father called me up and said, You're going to be signing to this plane lease. <laughs> this plane lease. <laughs> So uh, I got a box of CDs next to me all the time and just signing away. And uh, we had we had band rehearsal and said, hey, bring some cameras, man. Let's just go ahead and have, mm-hmm. have some fun. And it's just, you know, really some inside. I mean, in, in all honesty, 
not in a reality TV kind of way, but when we're creating, when we're working, I wouldn't mind cameras being on us all the time and like letting people see, you know, what we're going through. It, it's not perfect. We're trying to get it together. You, if you look at the studio, sloppy mixing boards that we haven't used in years laying yeah, around. Studio, yeah, it's homely studio, isn't it? It's like, hey, man, we didn't try to clean it up or fix it. We just said, hey, man, I want you guys to see it inside of um, of how we do when we're working. Mm. You Is know? that... Talking about the reality side of things, you know, so many um, aspects of the music industry or the music, the, the industry in general, really, yeah. are based to, upon sort of reality. People like Tamar Braxton, I, I interviewed last year, and she was she lives with a camera following her. Yeah. Is that something that you consider to, you know, to to move <sighs> on to do something different? Or I don't, I don't know if I don't know if it has to be that serious. It depends on the check that comes with that camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anything, anything's negotiable, I guess, yeah. but. I don't know if you want that much, but what I will tell you is that when I when I, I wouldn't mind when I walk into a studio, I I don't know if it'll be that entertaining, mm. you know. And even my I, I don't have, I don't know if I have a drama filled life like that. Right, I mean, okay. But but when we're creating, I wouldn't mind cameras being on me creating. But it's actually a very boring, long winded process mm. of creating, you know. But but if it gives somebody insight, when I was a, when I was a kid trying to understand music and learn, I would have given anything to watch. You know my my heroes Stevie Wonder or, or Al Green or or Joe see or Boys or anybody come up with how, how did they come up with these songs like mm. how how are they in the studio doing that you know um, the personal life I don't know if anybody watch, watch me make pancakes like it's not it's not that much drama you know but I think you, for those reality shows you kind of have to create some kind of drama I prefer not to have drama to be honest like you know for the most part I kind of like everything outside of the stage just be real easy going you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you either want that element of privacy, or you just want to be out there in the line. But for the right, right, for the right check, you know. I mean, they said anything, anything is the ghost. But I talk, sit down with wife, and I'm like, we will have these cameras in the bathroom, girl. It's going to cost us that, you know. Oh, wow. But uh, but I would, I, you know, at the price where it might cost, um, you know, some level of certain things with my kids, yeah. or, or 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 damage to to my sure. relationship. There's certain things you put on the atmosphere, man. I, I don't know. I, I would worry a little bit about, mm -hmm. you know. Of course. So, uh, B-Sides, Features, and Heartaches. Indeed. Another track I want to uh, talk to you about from the album. This is one of the sweetest collabos for me. It's, it's, it's a slightly different, I think, okay. for, that I've heard you sort of uh, be on. Aaron Camper track. Ah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I love that track, Far Away Girl. I, Aaron Camper, first of all, great friend. I think uh, next year we'll be all talking about Aaron Camper in a different kind of way. I think he's just going to be really, really huge over the next 365 days. Um, but he's just a, a good friend from back back home. Uh, uh, he and I and a, and a couple other guys have um, a big Monopoly competition. It happens at my house. It's a big rivalry. Love like, Monopoly. Like, yeah, it's, we need, we need you to need, You need to come. All right, because cool. Because, I mean, it's almost fist fights <laughs> and just – Flipping the board over, it's really, really bad. Yeah. And during one of those late night sessions of all night Monopoly games, um, we started talking about music and, and we came up with this idea. And, uh, and it was real, real easy. And, uh, and it's just one of those simple things that, you know, um, you see a girl in the crowd and, and, and you barely even get a chance to, you know, you almost every time you walk to that side of the stage, you have almost a relationship yeah. of energy passing with this person. And they leave and you leave. And the song's about... I left, but I'm still there. Right. She left, but she's still there. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of that um, that story that she, she's far away, but anywhere, but in my heart. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So, um, great song, man. He sounds great on it, and uh, and any way that I can help amplify what he's doing, uh, you know, I'm all for it. But I think he's on his way, man. I think uh, it's, a, be it's a beautiful song, and I played it on my show for the first time because I've been playing any more, and I played it on my show for the first time last week, and. Immediately had some tweets about it. Oh, so good. I love this song. So good, good. I'm trying to decide whether, you know, do we make it a single, we shoot a video for it? Well, that's, that's, that's helping a little bit. That's Absolutely. helping. Absolutely. Okay. You know I mean? Like I said, you know, I played any more, I played that. And I know next week on the show I'm going to be playing a lot more. Oh, good, uh, good. It might be a bit of a problem, man. It might be an Eric <laughs> Robeson show. Um, anyway, what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the poor district on, um, on Monopoly? We've got Old Kent Road. Oh wait, wait! No, you see, yeah, which one? It's the, 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 oh, the poor district. Yeah, the, the one that's about oh. three pounds. <laughs> yeah, it's the real cheap. What's the name? I know the expensive one is Boardwalk. What is, what is your expensive Bond one? The, um, we got Park Lane and Mayfair. Oh, okay, okay, so yeah. That's, I, that's, what is ours? Kent? What is, it's, it's a, yeah, the real cheap streets. I don't even bother the cheap streets. I'm, I'm going straight for the. I'm trying yeah, to break people's. They're spirits. the ones that when you pass go, you always land on. You get about, yeah, yeah. We yeah. get about like four pounds of that. <laughs> Probably about two dollars. Uh, <laughs> you get back to 200. I'm always laying on the little income tax thing that takes away the, the money I make at the pass and go. So it's, it's, it's always, you know, it's real bad. You got, the dice game has to be really up to yeah, par. Totally, you know, man. Play that totally. Game. So let's talk a little bit more about um, Eric Robeson, the, uh, the songwriter. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, you're prolific. 
prominent, yeah. been putting albums out for, like, like you said earlier on, 20 years in the game. That's, yeah. You have to be doing your thing right to be lasting that long. Do you know what I mean? You've got a lot of fans it. out there. Real fans of yours as well will know that you've got lyrics for days. You freestyle at your shows oh, as well. You yeah, know, yeah, I love yeah. that. I hope you're going to drop a little freestyle Why for us later Why on, not? you know. But um, would you say uh, songwriting and producing, does that, does that come equally as natural to you as, as maybe freestyling? I mean, do you, does it flow that easily or do I mean, you get kind of, blocked it's kind of a It's kind of a part of you. I, I, I do songwriting seminars everywhere I go and a lot of it is to put aside the myth of writer's block. And writer's block is really getting in the way of yourself. Mm. So the moment that you can get out of the way of yourself, the moment you can really open those channels. Mm. You know, it's, and it's no different than, you know, your favorite football player on the field kicking the ball through somebody's legs, doing a spin and kicking the ball into the goal. It's like it's all we've practiced it so much mm. to where the, the practice part is invisible. Mm. Now it's just us being us, you know. So, you know, I've been – I've been beating on the, the you know the cafeteria table doing little MC rhymes ever since I was a little kid, and then I applied it to my music, and then I applied it to the studio. So it's all second nature. Of course, you once in a while I get a, you know a little stumped, but that's more of more you want to make it where it needs to be. But it, it shouldn't be. Um, I always look at process over product, so it shouldn't be. Man, can I make this record so that man the radio will play it? Man, is, is the DJ's going to blast this? It shouldn't be that. Mm-hmm. It should be. Is this right? Is it feeling good? Is it giving me what I, you know, it's just the process of making it what it should be and and everything. I mean, even this conversation should be the process of us having a good conversation, Mm -hmm. you know, rather than, man, you know, am I sitting up straight and, you know what I mean? It's like, now let's get into the whole thing. We know how to do this. We've talked a million times. Let's go. And it's the same. I mean, every aspect is the same way. When we get in the studio, you hopefully that it comes out right the same way that your soccer player hopes that he wins the game. Mm. But you go through the process and, and, and hopefully all the pieces fall together. You know, and a lot of times you, you'll make a great song. A lot of times you make a great song that maybe people just didn't get. There's times I've, I've been ready to throw a song in the garbage and it's been a huge record and, and vice versa. Right. So for me, I learned to stay true to it. You know, and don't think about me while I'm doing it. Just stay true to it and, and see where the cards fall. Mm. But it's interesting that you say that, you know, it's just what you do. It's, not, it's what an artist like you does. I'm still waiting for D'Angelo's third album. Ah, you know? well, well, I mean, and, and, and not knowing him, but knowing enough of the situation, that's a perfect example of <clears throat> um, getting in the way of yourself. And, and, and I'll also say that uh, writer's block, and this may not necessarily apply to him, mm. the biggest cause of writer's block is success. You know, you'll have trouble writing a song one day if the day before you wrote an amazing record. Mm. Because if, when you walk in, you're going to go, <clears throat> was this record better than the one I did yesterday? Already got in the way. Yeah. You're already giving yourself yeah. trouble. And, and you know, we have, have applied a lot of pressure because he's given us two albums that have changed our direction and, yeah. and gave us so much uh, emotion and passion. Yeah. So I'll be happy with just demos from D'Angelo right now. You know <laughs> what I mean? I'll be happy with something. anything. But we also have placed him on a certain place yeah. where at the same time, if, if he comes out, there's certain fans going to be like, oh, this ain't correct, whatever, whatever, whatever. At the end of the day, you know, I would have loved for him to put out 10 albums. You know, like just put out a lot of work. You know, Prince has done it. Omar has done it. Just put out a lot of work. You know what I mean? And, and some records are going to miss. I mean, even Stevie Wonder has put out songs that we haven't liked. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's inevitable, you know. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, for me, with all of it, you just try to stay healthy, man. And, and with D'Angelo, of all, in, in all aspects, you just pray for health for him. And just yeah, that, that, that I think that music will start coming. I'm glad he's so, on the road man. again. That's the, that's the best aspect. Well, he threatened to do it, didn't he, last year? I think, uh, obviously, Brown Sugar, and, uh, yeah, Brown Sugar and, and Voodoo come. And like, we was like, okay, the third one's coming. Yeah. He started to do some shows. And it, it's just like, man. Well, he also still got to wait for the business, too. And that's the tough part. You know, mm. and in in the business, you know, there was a, there was a big gap for Maxwell at one point. There's a big gap, and I think people are realizing that D'Angelo is is uh, is still very very relevant. You know, um, but he doesn't have to come back with a six pack and doesn't have to do. You know, it's like just just come back, That's just right. give us some great music, and hopefully all sides meet the business side, him him personally, and we'll have some great music. You man. need to talk to him because it's just like you was literally saying. You know, it shouldn't have to be about you know doing a manufactured record or doing a record that radio wants to play you should just feel it well he's never done that anyway brown sugar no, was nothing like that voodoo was not, mm. you know but but like i said it gets to the point where you know he probably has placed a lot on himself and you can just hear that from any interview that that he's given as well as the, the quest loves and all the people who have been responsible for a lot of that success you know um i i've 
greatly tried to stay away from that, mm. you know. And, I mean, if I could be as real as possible, I remember being in a store and Omar's album came out the same time D'Angelo's album came out, mm-hmm. pretty much in the States. And you look at those careers, I was blown away by both records. Mm-hmm. And Omar may, may have never had that immediate success that, that D'Angelo's had, but Omar has been able to put out consistent records. I mean, he's given us a lot of material. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's able to get on stages without, you know, and, and maybe to Omar, he might, might would love to have had a certain D'Angelo success to be able to sell out a stadium or a certain arena, and he might could do that here, but, you know, in the States. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if you told me I could have one of their careers now, I would take Omar's in a second. Really? I'll take Omar's in a sec just because it's about getting music out there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, at the end of the day, I wouldn't want to 500 songs and be like, that I, 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 no one's ever heard them. You know, and after I'm long gone, everybody will get, <laughs> everybody yeah. get them because the family starts selling off, selling off the estate. Uh, I mean, I, it's about the body of work. Even though D'Angelo's put out, I mean, I would love to, be, I would love D'Angelo's career as well. Two I mean, masterpiece two, albums. You two masterpiece yeah, albums yeah. are incredible. Yeah. But, but it's about releasing, you know, make something and get it out there, man. And it's so interesting you, you, if you say about um, Omar. He just gets it out there. I, I did a, an interview with him right here. And yeah. um, it was a chronological breakdown, basically, of his career from start to, wow. to present day. And it was, I, couldn't, I couldn't obviously fit in all the music. Obviously, no, no. Talking to him as well. But he just said, yeah, I'm, I'm improving all the time. And when I put an album out, you know, I feel that I'm doing something better than the last. And that's all he wants to do. That's, all, that's the only rule. Artist, man, love it. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about uh, another track from the album, B Sides. Yeah. Um, features a heartaches. The Westfeld West Felton track. Yeah. Postcards yeah. from the that's that's it's quite an insight in the lyrics to that. Yeah, it feels yeah, quite is yeah. that a new track? Is that a brand no, new track? No, man. I mean that track may be ten years old. No way. Maybe ten years old. Maybe ten years. We we he and I were both just starting it maybe a little bit like nine years, maybe. Nine years. He and I were just starting uh to um, kind of get our feet wet in the whole independent scene. Mm. And I met him. I met him when he did a show with me, and he had his son with him. His son was, I mean, he pretty much was on stage doing sound check with a newborn baby in his arm. Wow. And I was like, who are you? This is amazing. That's a beautiful visual. I see myself that one day. And uh, when we recorded the song, his, his son was right there. Like, it, what I do right now is what I watched him do. Tonight. He recorded his verse, literally, with his son right here. And we were eating sushi and, you know, just kind of... And that was a big eye opener because because before that point I always thought you know your records need to be done in the studio and have it whatever we when I say that we recorded that record mm. like in like a living room <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. like literally just like let's bring the food in and bring the kids yeah. in it was like it was like and it, was, and it came out great it came out absolutely great and great and like I said it was a, a very truthful record it's like you know it's uh, just as, as I have an amazing wife mm-hmm. but uh, but any woman who who was this decided to be with me. Or, or or someone like myself has to realize that they're going to sleep alone a lot of nights. It's just it's it's just a territory. I mean, Valentine's Day is next week. I got gigs. That's where I make my money, you know. And even when I'm home, the ideas start popping in your brain at two o'clock in the morning. So even when I'm asleep, I'm like, wait, I got an idea. And I'm I'm clicking equipment on. So, you know, I, that's really tough for some people. And we, mm-hmm. and we wrote about how it could be tough for some people in that song. And uh, I, I thank God every day that I have someone who understands it appreciates it and kind of how can i compliment this crazy schedule that you do and, and and she does man and that's that's the best it's mad that if that record was sort of made 10 years ago it's more apt for you probably now right? yeah 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 you know, it's newborn and you know a, yeah and, it, and it's absolutely crazy it's so symbolic and that's probably why we moved it more to the front but it's it's a record that i th- knew a lot of people wouldn't know about um but it relates still to this very day you mm. know um in everything we do must be hard though. It's just it's, even just to keep a happy home. Oh, touring, yeah. you know. What I mean? Yeah, it helps. I mean, I was you know, FaceTiming my kids, you know, and my wife. It was, you know, technology better, helps, but yeah. I mean, we didn't have that even five years ago. So you know, you're trying to figure all that stuff out. But you know, it helps. And, and, and but the beautiful thing about this is when you're when you're working hard, you're working hard. But when you're off, you're off. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm super dab and I'm home. You what know? do you do? You know what what do you do when you you know when you're chilling at home and you know? Changing diapers, uh, you know, making pancakes, <laughs> picking the kid, dropping my son off to, to, to at the bus and yeah. picking him up, and I mean, it's it's completely shut down. I, I see myself co- coaching football and all this other stuff. Oh, I mean, I do it the same my, what my father did, you know. Yeah. And you, but you mix it with you find time, you know. You but find do you shut time. off from the music completely, or? 
or is no, it kind it's, of? It's, it's part of this. I mean, you, 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 for me, I don't want to be that. That I already spend so much time on the road, so I'm already gone from that aspect. So everything else is just equal right in there. Mm. So when I'm recording, they're in the room with me. You know, it's like because okay. I don't want to be like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll see you guys later. I'm going down to work. Yeah, they, they're used to it now. Like okay, I said, so they. The, the, the little one got the drumsticks, and they, they just, they're just jamming. You, you'll probably hear them on the next record. I mean, okay. like literally behind me, like doing something or, or snoring in my lap or something. You know? I'll be looking out for him, man. <laughs> uh, so listen, you, you've collaborated with some amazing people. Robert Glasper yeah. on his album. I mean, that, pff, dude. Thank you. That's yeah, crazy. It's, great it's crazy. Um, on this album, of course, um, Angela Johnson. Jazzy Jeff in the past, Rich Harrison. Who, have you, um, who would you most like to collaborate with that you haven't yet? There's so many people. I mean, Erica Badu is always at the top of my list. You know, I just love Erica Badu and, and, and how she creates. I would love to even just watch her uh, create and what she could come up with. But there's uh, there's so many even upcoming talent. There's, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, this group named King. Um, yeah, you told me about those, uh, those girls. Well, how come you didn't get them on this album? I uh, looked out for them. I couldn't. Well, guess what? We're working on something. Oh, okay. No, but I can't. Okay. I can't speak on it yet because we we haven't done anything yet. But I will tell you <clears throat> that I saw them recently while I was on the road, and they played me their new album, and it's coming out this year, and it's and it's beautiful, really phenomenal. Um, uh, really love like Laura Muvala, like she just yeah, she's stuff I heard, man. I mean, there's so many people that I, I'm really appreciating what they're doing, and would love to work with them. But like I said, top of the list, I would probably say Erica Badu just. That that voice, man, she's just amazing. I would love to hear collaboration with you and Eric, yeah, man. That'd be yeah, that'd be crazy. That uh, you still got your residency at uh, SOBs? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're at, we're celebrating that our tenth anniversary, uh, and uh, are now it's the longest running you know R and B showcase in New York, and uh, it, it's really grown into something even even crazier now because a lot of the artists um, that you're seeing coming out now uh, from Luke James and and such have all performed at, right. at Soul Village now. It's, it's hard to find, you know, a young, say, soul singer mm-hmm. um, that hasn't graced that stage, you know, and it's been a, a great honor and it's a reason why we did it and, and hopefully we can, I hope we can do it for another 10 years. I mean, it's, it really it's really means a lot to me. It's, it's, it's my baby, so. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a great opportunity for myself as well. It's, it's more stage time. I think the comfort that people find, uh, that people see in me on my shows comes from that stage, right. doing that f- every single month for 10 years allows you to learn how to just be you on stage. Just to um, clarify what we're actually talking about, with that, SOBs is, um, if you've ever been to the Jazz Cafe in London, it's a pretty sort of similar, intimate um, live music platform. I would say, and it's steeped in so much music history, isn't it? It's like, oh, yeah. like the Jazz Cafe is over here as well. And uh, Eric does um, a showcase night where he introduces a lot of artists as well as doing some stuff yourself. Yeah. I mean, I've been there eating some food while I've been <laughs> jamming, and it's just an amazing place. Um, so if you're ever in uh, New York, make sure you check out SOBs and Soul Village, which is uh, Eric's night. Uh, who yeah. would you say is the most standout person? Because you've had so many people there, like from algebra to, I mean, it, loads of people. Yeah. Who would you say is one of the most standout people you've had? Uh, perform on your stage there i mean there's so many a lot of them some people you know would probably never hear before i will tell you this there's only been um two encores there's only been in in the history of the time we've done it there was a band called the fuzz band a band out of virginia and they no one knew who they were they drove up from virginia got on stage and they killed so crazy that when i went up to say ladies and gentlemen the crowd not having one fuzz band um a fan in the in the room yeah more, 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 more. Yeah. I had to bring them back up to do another song. They, they, they killed that much. Um, Luke James, I remember um, just that falsetto. No one knew who he was at the time. Yeah. He got up there and he hit that falsetto and everyone just went, who this? Okay. Yeah, you know, really um, uh, I don't know if you know, um, what is her name? Uh, George, uh, Georgia. Is it Georgia and Georgia? Georgia uh, and Muldrow. Jo- yeah. Oh. oh, She's sick. Man, years she's ago sick. she got up there and she just, uh, all she did was get up there on, on a piano. Right, it just her by herself. She didn't go with a whole band, and just kill. There's moments where I mean, where it's been crazy. And then you just have, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, and it's and it's the left and right turns that mm-hmm. happens as well. There was once a time where um, uh, someone didn't give me a bio for the next act. Just a real quick story of it. Yeah. So they they hand me the bio literally as the person's about to come on stage. I say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna introduce this artist. This person is a love child of Stevie Wonder and Prince, <laughs> and I stopped. Right. I, I said, wait a minute, did that really just say the love child of Stevie Wonder and Prince? I looked over at, at Daniel, the keyboard player, pretty much the founding member of the, of the, of the show as well. He already knows that. We're already going. So we make a song called It's Too Late. We made it right on the spot right. called how, how, how You Tricked Stevie Wonder 
into having a child with Prince because by the time he realized it, <laughs> Prince was a man, it was too late. <laughs> and it just literally the whole place, Daniel's playing the keyboards, laying on the floor with his hand up, like playing, and we're just dying laughing. Uh, the whole crowd is on the floor. I mean, it almost probably ruined the kid's career, poor guy. But I mean, you shouldn't have wrote the bio like that. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> you know, but it was just like, uh, yeah. it was a good time. And that's and that Soul Village, man. That's yeah, Soul absolutely. Village. just Anything can happen on those, on that stage. Yeah, man. My soul family, if you're out there, you need to check this place out. Um, okay. Uh, talking about that, let's just uh, another quick point about that. Would you use that as a platform to find new artists to work with as well? Have you ever done that? Or? Yeah, a uh, Colette who's on this who, who's oh, okay. on this who's on this record. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a song after she did Soul Village. She did Soul Village, and and we were really impressed with what she was doing. And you know, she was just that hustle, like you know, I'm trying to put my album together. And I said, well, let me know what you what you're working on. And and we got together and, and did a song. And it really happens all the time. You know, Aaron Camper, who's on this record, did Soul Village. It's it's been a, a, a outlet for so many people now that um, you know a lot of people. Full Crate and Mar when they came into to the states, we brought them up and, and they jammed out with us. So. Mm-hmm. Robert Glasper has jumped on many times. That's where I met Rob at, you know, oh, really? pretty much just to, because we end every night with a jam session. Yeah. So he would just come every night and just get up there and just destroy everything Crazy. on the stage. Crazy. And um, it's been a it's been a good time, man. It's just been a great time. And that's what the whole thing's about. So it's not just from that stage. That's just a part of it. Mm-hmm. But whatever stage we get on, you know, we, we met so many good friends from Jazz Cafe and from from studios that we've done here, um, as well as other travels, mm-hmm. man. So it's it's been great. You know, with the, there's a record called Games on here. And I did games here in London while while out here on tour. And a bass player I met here, Nick Cohen, said, "Hey man, I got this producer in Japan that I'm doing an album with." And we, before you know, I said, "Well, let's book the studio time." Before you know it, the next day we were in the studio recording that song. Mm-hmm. Just just how it comes out, man. If you have time to do it, let's knock it out. That's the album, people. You need to get it. It's called B Sides, Features, Heartaches. Yeah, we ain't finished yet though. No, no, because. This album's out now. There's another album on the way. Another album. You know, he about, uh, Tentatively called Musical Monologues. I may change the name, but uh, but uh, so far, that's where it's at. It's it's coming along. I mean, it's really coming really, really nice. Uh, I'm really happy with We're about eight songs in right now. Mm-hmm. And and what's left is the collaborations. We haven't we haven't finished the collaborations yet. And that's the part where uh, uh, I kind of already know where they're going. I'm already loving where it's at. So uh, I'm just really happy. I think sometime between July and, and October, we'll be putting that album out. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm still digging stuff from outside and <laughs> left. And, you know what I mean? So, you know, pen just cry. I mean, I'm still oh. that tune. It's just, oh. That is one ridiculous record. That bass yeah. line is, man. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's um, talk about touring now. Yeah. you got some UK stops. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing... Uh, uh, what's it? The Clapham Grand here, uh, uh, and then we're doing Band on the Wall on Saturday. Got here. Yeah, yes, yes. Come, come out, come out. Buy all tickets. Buy some for even for your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and then doing Band on the Wall, great venue in Manchester. We always love okay. going there. And then uh, the Drum, which we have, you know, we have just as many amazing memories at the Drum in, in Birmingham as we have uh, in the stages out here in London. So always looking forward to coming out here and, and having a good time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the band's excited about it, so so it's, it's going to be amazing. You know, I think we're going to actually introduce a couple of new songs from f- from before uh-huh. that people haven't heard us perform here too. So I'm I'm excited about it. Okay, you're going to be doing one of your infamous uh, freestyles. <laughs> of course, listen, it started here. I don't know if you knew that it started. It started seriously. It started in London. It started London. Like my second time here performing, I had a house band from London. I couldn't afford to bring my band at the time, and. Um, we did all the songs that they rehearsed mm. and we had an encore and we did all those songs and the crowd was like, we want more. And I was like, we have no more. <laughs> and I said, all right, well, let's make a song up then. I mean, literally I'm right there on the stage and someone yelled out shoplifter and we did a song about shoplifting and, uh, right. and like shoplifting my CD and I'm going to chase you down the streets of London. And, 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 it, and it, people went crazy. And I mean, it was, you know, I've been freestyling all my life. I just <clears> never <throat> did it in front, like, like just front and center in front of a crowd. And from that point on, it was like, it was immediate. It had to be in every show, and now we add on more words, and it gets even crazier. And 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 uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. What I want people to take from that is that once again, the collaborative effort. And it's like to make a show, the crowd is just as much responsible as what we're doing on stage. Yeah. So to take words, we got to see if it works. We got to make it work. And I I don't know if it's gonna work just as much as the person in the crowd doesn't know, but it somehow comes together because we 
we we we all do it, you know, and it, and it's great, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, have some great ones on this trip. If you guys to see Eric, and I know you will do, make sure you shout out some words to him because what he does. Just to explain, he shouts out. He's, he asks you to shout out maybe two or three words. Yeah, now we now we take phrases. Every... We take whatever now. Yeah, just oh, the, cra- the crazier the better. <laughs> we, like just don't. As long as it's not like love or peace or faith, because we sing that. Yeah. It's like it's, eh, it might be boring. Like give me toenail clippings and Air Max sneakers, whatever. Like <laughs> go go as crazy, and then watch us all put it together. And you know, I mean, we do it at every show now. So I almost want it to be as crazy as it can be. Yeah. So I'm not singing what I sing yesterday. You know what I mean? And, uh, it test, does it test you out? Do you feel that it tests you out? Have oh you yeah, ever, that's what I want. Have uh, you, you had know? a struggle to get one of the words in, like. Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes they, they're yelling so many out that I'll, I'll forget. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm old now, man. You know, so they'll yell out five or six names. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. so I turn on the band and say, make sure you remind me of that word. And they go like, okay, cool. Or, or somebody will yell out some, you know, uh, chemistry major will yell out some scientific phrase. And I'm like, okay, you're trying to impress the person next to you. What does that mean? Like, somebody Google that word so we can, <laughs> so we can find out what that means. But we'll throw it in. You know, it, it works, man. It's always great, man. So I know the dates. Are they on your website? Yeah, they're all on the website, um, as well as this, we got full, a full tour schedule after that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, they can pick up tickets. They can find them on information, door times, everything. EricRobersonMusic.com has all the information. Okay, listen, Eric, man, it's yeah. been, once again, a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always, Make man. sure you come back and see us at the My Soul uh, Towers very soon. No Good doubt. luck with the album. Thank it's you. It's out there now. Once again, My Soul family, go and cop it. It's called B-Size. Features, heartaches. Look forward to that other album coming. Yeah. So that's going to drop this year as well. It's going to drop this year, definitely. Okay. I guarantee it. That's where you heard it. Yeah. Bad boy. Good luck with the child. I'm going to see you down there. No doubt. Yeah.